This particular case is interesting in that it shows how wear of the acetabulum and femoral head can create challenges similar to the ones we see in developmental dysplasia of the hip. It's also a nice case to show how newer technologies can be applied to older techniques to either facilitate them or improve their accuracy and results. So I think most surgeons who do a lot of hip surgery recognize this problem periodically in their patients, a patient with rather advanced osteoarthritis, where wear of the acetabulum has occurred, where the femoral head is falling into a defect in the acetabulum. In this particular case, we see where the normal hip center should be. We see where the femoral head is, and we see the superlateral defect that is associated with the wear of the acetabulum. Classically, this is managed with grafting. However, in the modern age, I think most surgeons opt to use metal augments or lean on a high hip center to deal with this problem. One of the benefits of the anterior approach has been to improve upon our radiographic control of the procedure. This technique that we developed took advantage of the development of these high friction porous conings and the ability to intraoperatively use x-ray to guide implant positioning. In most cases we can use equipment that is found in most ORs across the country. Uh, we're using the Synthes small fragment set. 3.5 fully threaded cortical screws are used for fixation of the graft with associated washers. Sometimes we'll use a one-third tubular plate. The long 2.5 drills can sometimes be helpful. Typically we're using a bone tamp to impact the graft. The power tools that we're using is the System 7. Um, I think the most important thing, however, is that you use a hemispherical reamer and a high friction acetabular component. The first step is to identify both radiographically and anatomically the false acetabulum and then the true acetabulum. For in this case, the ball has worn a defect in the superlateral acetabulum and into the ilium. So the idea is to prep that area for eventual grafting. Typically, the neck cut is made under fluoroscopy. The head neck fragment is extracted and immediately measured. And from this measurement, we can gauge the size of the defect that's going to be in the acetabulum. Immediately we introduce the similar size reamer into the acetabular defect and use this not to medialize and prepare for an acetabular component but rather just to decorticate the bone or at least get to punctate bleeding to make sure that we have good biologic preparation of the bone for accepting a graft. The second step is to take the same reamer and then direct it more distally at the level of the teardrop to place the hip in the anatomic hip center. The definitive acetabular component is then opened and placed in the anatomic hip center in anticipation that there's going to be a large superlateral defect. The goal of fixation, however, is between the anterior and posterior columns as depicted here. The definitive acetabular component is opened and placed under direct fluoroscopic control with the goal of replicating appropriate antiversion and inclination as defined by our preoperative plan. The cup is provisionally secure between the columns and screw fixation is then obtained. Care is taken during application of screws to check and recheck acetabular component position and it is common at this point that application of very strong screw fixation may create minor alterations in cup position. We then turn our attention to the femoral head. The femoral head is de depicted here where a reamer or another acetabular component or trial component is used to identify the section of the femoral head that needs to be taken. And this takes a little bit of artistic three-dimensional thought, but basically we're looking at this kind of like a lemon wedge and trimming this to fit the defect. Once the bone graft is provisionally in place, we tamp this into position, thereby loading the graft, and we secure it with a single, sometimes two, 3.5 fully threaded cortical screws. 
in our hands, this has been an efficient way of providing structural support to an acetabular component. The benefits of this have been almost uniform incorporation of the graft, a simplified procedure that requires nothing more than tools that exist in most ORs throughout the country, and the benefits of immediate weight bearing. In this particular case, we applied the procedure in a bilateral fashion, allowing the patient to fully mobilize immediately after surgery. He was weight bearing as tolerated without dislocation precautions. His rehabilitation was as per our typical post-operative routine. We hope you find this to be a straightforward and easily applied technique, which requires little additional equipment and provides reproducible results as it relates to structural augmentation of the acetabular component when autologous femoral head is available. Thank you for your time.